So we have gotten ourselves a bunch of Red Wings conversations started up over the past few hours. Starting out with some official news from the team itself, some of the most tragic and devastating news to be hearing at this point of the season. Because, per coach Derek Lalonde, you have yourselves Captain Dylan Larkin, who will be out approximately two weeks with a lower body injury. And this needs no explanation as to why it is one of the worst pieces of news the Red Wings have had this year. And Tony Dombrowski goes out there and even replies with a sentiment that I think a lot of Wings fans share pretty well. Take my lower body, Dylan Larkin. I don't need it. Larkin, of course, though, has been the heart and soul, the motor of this Motor City team. And, I mean, look, his 54 points in 55 games played, his presence is going to be missed. He's a point-per-game guy, a leader guy on this team, and we're going to need the rest of the team to step up here and fill in the shoes of Captain Larkin because that's not an easy player to go out there and replace. It takes a village to raise a child, and it'll take the entire village of the Red Wings to raise the expectations and the bar whilst Dylan Larkin is out. So I'm interested in seeing where the wings are going to go with this, what the lines are going to look like post Larkin, because two weeks is a long time. And to be honest, like the way NHL injuries normally go, I wouldn't be surprised if Larkin was out for a little bit more than just two weeks, because for some reason, you know, maybe I'm just cursed as a Vancouver fan, but I'm used to seeing guys, oh, they're week to week, oh, they're out for two to three weeks. They always take like a month and a half to come back. It's always like that for some reason, but we'll see if Dylan Larkin and the rest of the Red Wings staff are on track to actually being accurate with this report, but for now, the Red Wings are going to have to do without their captain, which is a huge, significant blow. Meanwhile, we have ourselves some other updates around the world of the Red Wings, mostly from Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick on the 32 Thoughts podcast. Now, we had ourselves Ryan Hanna from the Winged Wheeled Pod, good friend of mine, go out there and tweet out about these individual notes. Starting out with the first one right here, the Red Wings are looking to clear space. And they wonder jokingly whether or not the Justin Hall conversation could find himself in the Toronto Maple Leafs organization once again because that team needs right-handed defensemen. Now, for the Wings and the idea of them clearing that roster space, it's not really all too surprising. Take a look at the Wings right now. They have a projected $3 million in cap space and quite a few guys that are expiring at the end of this season. So if you want to talk about guys who could be on the move, most likely you're looking at some players that aren't really all too great. We've already established what the way the Wings have gone this season and the fact that they're in a wild card. It'd be kind of foolish for them to trade away a Patrick Kane or maybe trade away a Perron or something like that. Sure, some of these guys are expiring at the end of the year, so you may not re-sign them. But with the way the team is going and with the roles that some of these players play... It may very well be in your best interest to hold on to the guys that are actually making a pretty alright impact and let go of the ones that are just kind of extra fat around the team. Justin Hall, you could say, has not been good this season, but he's got that reputation and he's got that cap hit where it's like, hey, if the Toronto Maple Leafs really need themselves a defenseman, why not talk about Justin Hall? But of course, that's just kind of joking around. I mean, he's got a modified no-trade clause, so it's not really like he's the most movable asset on the team anyway, but it is a funny idea tossed out there by Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick. We'll see where exactly the wings go with this freeing up cap space situation, though. We've got a few days until the trade deadline here. Let's go on to the second point, as highlighted by the folks on the Wing Wheeled pod. Jake Gensel fits, but a max extension is not Steve Eiserman's style. And we had talked about this in the video a few days ago as well when we discussed the New Jersey sponsor for the Wings. But Jake Gensel, while he is an asset that could fit stylistically, you want to talk about the age range, you want to talk about the skills. There's a lot of fits here, but he is in need of an extension and he probably is going to try to get that eight year deal. Steve Eiserman doesn't like to do that. He likes to give four-year deals. The only eight-year deal we have seen him give out recently was to Dylan Larkin. And so, because Gensel is not Larkin, maybe not in terms of skill, but in terms of status on the team, he hasn't been born and bred in Detroit and drafted by Detroit and grown up in Detroit's system and played for Detroit this entire time. He doesn't have that longevity with the wings, nor that goodwill to justify an eight-year contract with this team. 
Steve Eisenman probably doesn't have it in his best interest to go out there and trade for Gensel, considering the ask and considering that he may have to make do with letting Gensel go to free agency if they can't come to an agreement. So that's already one of the big hurdles here. It doesn't really make sense for the Wings to go out there and get Gensel. Moving over onto the next conversation here. Friedman and Merrick say that Steve Eiserman is working on Raymond and Cider extensions, which that is not surprising in the slightest, considering the fact that these guys are both expiring at the end of the year, they're RFAs, and because you had just signed Michael Rasmussen to a contract, 3.2 mil, for the next four seasons, you're kind of wondering, okay, where are Cider and Raymond gonna go? These guys are probably gonna get four-year deals again, because everybody else is seeming to get four-year deals, but... These guys probably should get a little bit more dollars than what Resmussen and JT Comfer ended up getting, so we'll see where exactly the wings go with that. If I had to guess, I mean, like, you could justify, because it's only four years, that the wings may sign these guys to. You can understand if it's not really too high of a dollar amount, like, oh, bridge transitory kind of deal, let's say six million dollars max. If they try to go the eight-year route, which again is unlikely because Iserman's track record doesn't really do that often, then maybe you could see that dollar amount creeping up into the seven, eight, nine-ish, maybe, million dollar AAV range. Okay, maybe nine's a little bit too much, but if you go eight years, I don't really see the problem with that. And I mean, hey, if there's anybody that Steve Eiserman is going to break his four-year rule for to go eight years or whatever with, it's going to be Raymond or Snyder. One of these two guys, maybe even both. But there is a specific track record and pattern that Steve Eiserman seems to follow every single year with these contract negotiations. So we'll see if that upholds itself as this season and off-season commences. And then we have ourselves another note about extra additions for the Wings. Friedman and Merrick are wondering about the Red Wings maybe needing a goalie, and that's one of the things that I don't know if it's necessarily too drastic of a conversation, mostly because Alex Lyon, for the most part, has been all right, but there are two other guys in this team that have not really been pulling their weight. James Reimer is a backup, I guess you could say, and Villa Huso is making 4.75 mil, which is just kind of tragic when you really think about it. That guy's making way too much money for the caliber of play that he provides. Both of these players, though, are on modified no-trade clauses, and Reimer expires at the end of this season. So, we'll see where exactly the wings go with the future of goaltending. Alex Lyon has been good, but if you wanted to say there is an upgrade that could be had here, I don't necessarily disagree. You want to have a 1-2 tandem that's super consistent all the time, right? A guy who can fill in the backup role and just take over what it was that Alex Lyon was pretty much supposed to be at the beginning of the season, then maybe it makes sense to go out there and look at another netminder, potentially at the expense of a Reimer or a Ville Husso. And then the final note here, as talked about by the 32 Thoughts folks, the Red Wings apparently want a snarled defenseman, which is an interesting way to talk about it because, I mean, we'd already discussed the value of guys like Ben Chirot, for example, on this team, on Montreal when they went to the finals, etc., etc. Guys who can just play with really big bites. They take bites out of the opponent. They've got that snarl, they've got that physicality, and they can play defensive hockey by blocking shots and hitting guys along the boards. I mean, we'd already talked a few days ago about how Ben Sherratt was really improving and how his game has gotten a lot more solid the past few days here. So maybe because of Sherratt's improvements, it's opened up the Wings management's mind and said, hey, we need more guys like that. We need more physical specimen on our blue line. And if there is sort of that kind of desire there, then I can understand it. There would be a few names that come to my mind as like snarly defensemen, but None of these guys, I think, are super valuable, you know? Like, I'm not sure what a Radko Gudis goes out there and accomplishes with this team, for example. If you want to talk about just defensive shot-blocking kind of guys, I mean, Philadelphia's got Nick Sealer and Sean Walker on the market. Everybody's talking about them. You can talk about, okay, Chris Tanev is already traded, so he's probably not on the market anymore. Seattle's got a few guys. Oleksiak and Larson have been paired as the shot-blocking Bash Brother duo. There are some other guys around the NHL that you could debate fill that role, but we'll see where exactly the Wings go with this. But this is our update for today. Dylan Larkin is out. The Wings are trying to work on extensions for Raymond and Larkin. The Wings are trying to clear space. Gensel fits, but he's not Iserman's style. You also want to about a goalie, and then there's also a snarl defenseman that the Wings apparently want. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about all these things and more with the Wings. I hope you enjoyed this. This British Rash Rolls 99 and bye.